Hey everybody, this is a video on storativity. Storativity is a relatively important concept in hydrogeology, and I've recently had a request from a friend to make a video on this, and it's been a while since I made a video, so I figured it's about time. Uh, but storativity in its most basic sense answers the question, how much water is going to be released from the aquifer if we pump on it? Okay, how much water is going to be released from storage in the aquifer? So think of it like that. So if you hear storage properties, storativity, those are the same things. And so here's kind of a definition I think I took from Wikipedia. In the field of hydrogeology, storage properties are physical properties that characterize the capacity of an aquifer to release groundwater. These properties are storativity, specific storage, and specific yield. So here's where it gets a little dicey is that we have different terms which apply to different things. So we're going to walk through these terms and define them and make it easy for you to understand this concept. So storativity, the amount of water that's going to be released from the aquifer, is going to depend on what kind of setting you're in. If you're in an unconfined aquifer like we have up here, it's going to be different than if you're in a confined aquifer like we have down here. So in this video I'm going to talk about storativity and specific storage of a confined aquifer system. So we're going to do this this example down here. Okay, Specific yield is really for unconfined aquifers. I'm going to save that for the next video. Um, it's a pretty easy concept, but let's just tackle these two, storativity and specific storage for now in a, in a confined aquifer setting. Okay, let's talk about these two terms for storativity and specific storage and how they relate to each other. So I've given you the definitions for each on both sides. I'm going to draw them out. So storativity, the volume of water, released from storage per unit surface area of the aquifer per unit decline in hydraulic head. And then stor specific storage, the volume of water released from storage per unit volume of the aquifer per unit decline in hydraulic head. So you see the difference? One is taking into account volume and then one is surface area. So let's draw these out. And I think it's a little easier to understand if I start with specific storage first, okay? So again, these are almost the same term. One of them just accounts for volume and one of them accounts for surface area. So let's look at specific storage. Let's look, look at what this looks like. So the volume of water released from storage per unit volume of our aquifer. So here's our unit volume down here. And let's give it a unit of one. Uh, let's do meters because everyone's been giving me grief about um, using Imperial lately. So let's give a shout out to our international um, international fans and, and use meters. I think it's a better, well, we all know it's a better system anyway, but anyway. So we have one cubic meter of our aquifer system. How much water is going to come out of this unit, if this, of this cubic meter, I'm not used to saying meters, um, if we lower the hydraulic head in this aquifer one foot, one meter. It's going to take some getting used to. So remember, this is our confined aquifer system. So what happens if, if you remember, what happens if we punctured this system with a well? What is the water level in this well going to do? Is it going to be down here or is it going to be up here? We know it's going to be up here, right? Because the aquifer is under pressure, right? The water is uh, creating pressure inside this confined system. And so if we puncture it with a well, that's going to release some of the pressure and bring up the water to this level here. That's our confined system, okay? So... Specific storage is saying if we lower this hydraulic or if we lower this potentiometric surface or hydraulic head one unit, one meter in this case, if we lower it by one meter, how much water is going to come out of this system? Well, better yet, how much water is going to come out of our one cubic meter of the aquifer? So again, just to recap, how much volume of water and we'll do our little volume of water up here. How many cubic meters of water are going to come out of one cubic meter of the aquifer if I lower the head one meter, right? That's all specific storage is saying. So let's look, look at our units here really quick. So specific storage equals the volume of water. So that's length, length cubed released from storage per unit volume of our aquifer, so that's another length cubed, so volume of water per unit volume of our aquifer, 
per unit head change or head lowering. So that's another L, right? So what are we left with? We're left with L cubed over, excuse me, we're not left with L cubed. We're left with one over L, right? So one over length is our units for a specific storage. Okay, hopefully that's clear about specific storage. Now, how does storativity relate to that? Let me bring up the the definition here. So the storativity, the volume of water released from storage per unit surface area of the aquifer per unit decline in hydraulic head. So it's the same thing. We're just saying instead of the volume, we're looking at the surface area, and we're taking into account our aquifer thickness. Okay, so we're looking at the surface area. And then we're taking into account how thick this aquifer is. Okay. So we're, we're integrating the thickness of this aquifer into this uh, calculation. And to do that, all we have to do is take specific storage times our aquifer thickness, which is usually represented as B, and we'll be left with storativity. Okay. So whereas specific storage is, you know, it's a specific quantity it's specific to one uh, one unit volume with storativity we're saying we're just going to look at the surface area and we're going to take into account how thick our aquifer is okay so what are the units for storativity so let me write over here so storativity equals our specific storage times our aquifer thickness and we already said that specific storage is equal to one over length, right? So one over length. And then our thickness is going to be length, right? So we end up with a dimensionless quantity. It's just a race ratio, right? That's storativity. There's no units. It's just a ratio of how much water is going to come out of uh, our, our aquifer per unit surface area if we take into account the thickness of that aquifer and we lower the head one unit. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And let's answer the question, how much water is gonna come out of our aquifer if we lower that, that head by one unit? And the answer, let me get rid of some of this stuff. The answer is not much. We're not gonna get much water out of our confined setting by lowering the head. And why is that? Well. Let's think back that, remember our aquifer here, our confined aquifer is under pressure, right? So the water is exerting pressure on the sand grains or whatever uh, material is in the aquifer. It's exerting pressure on this confining unit up here. And again, we puncture the, the, the aquifer system and the, the, the head rises above the contact with our confining unit because it's under pressure. So, when we lower this head by one unit, one meter, one foot, whatever, the amount of water we're getting out, what is, where is that water coming from? How is the aquifer releasing that water, right? How is the water coming out? And the answer kind of has to do with our pressure here. So we're, we're not taking water out of the aquifer by gravity. We're not lowering the water table here and actually draining the the sand or the the aquifer material you know we're not removing water in that sort of sense we're basically just kind of removing pressure right because it's still going to be under pressure it's still let me draw this better so it's still going to be under pressure because we've taken the let me see the potentiometric surface of the hydraulic head let's say it was there and then we lower it by one meter by pumping on it this is still confined, right? The, the water level in our well is still above our confining unit. So we're still in a confined condition. So we're not actually removing water in the sense that that gravity is draining it out of the aquifer and creating a cone of depression like you may have seen in some other videos, right? It's still a confined setting. All we've done is lowered the pressure a bit in this aquifer. So when we lower the pressure, what actually happens to this aquifer system is that the aquifer skeleton, as we call it, compresses a bit. Okay, so it, it just compresses like, um, like we've reduced the pressure. And so that's basically where your water is coming from. It's coming from decompression of this aquifer skeleton, as we call it. 
and it's also coming from a slight expansion of water. So if you think about it, if all we're doing is lowering the pressure a bit, we're just taking a, a bit of pressure out of this system, we're not going to get much water out of it because all we're doing is kind of collapsing this aquifer skeleton and letting the water expand a bit. Now this is much different than an unconfined system, which actually you get a Kono depression like that, and you're actually dewatering the aquifer and you're removing water by gravity drainage and that's called specific yield and so specific yield and unconfined aquifers and storativity and unconfined aquifers I'm gonna do another video on that that'll be the next video in this series hopefully this made sense and if it doesn't let me know in the comments and maybe I can redo this video um, I, it's hard to gauge sometimes if, if these things are landing unless you leave a comment um, with questions and that's always helpful for me, it's helpful for you. So I'll see you in the next video on specific yield and storativity as it, as it relates to unconfined aquifers.